Hey, good evening, everybody. Thanks for being here. This weather is perfect, isn't it? That's what I thought. Well, I want to welcome you to what we hope will truly be a night to remember. Tonight's a night where we're going to honor the past. We're going to celebrate the living legends that we're fortunate to have in the present. And hopefully, along that journey, inform and inspire our future. The history of Japanese American baseball is rich and far reaching, but there is no place in all of America as integral to that history than Fresno and our San Joaquin Valley. The uniforms that the Bulldogs are wearing tonight are replicas of the jerseys worn by the Fresno Athletic Club starting in the 1920s when that team of Japanese Americans was founded by a Fresno named Kenichi Zenomura, a native of Hiroshima, Japan. How about this? In 1927, just weeks after winning the World Series with the Yankees, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig were here in Fresno playing an exhibition with Zenomura's All-Stars. The Fresno Athletic Club also made multiple trips to Japan in the 1930s. That meant a month-long journey by sea to get there. They even held a series of games there against Negro League All-Stars who came from the States as well. And in the process, they exposed a generation of Japanese fans to a game that that country would come to embrace. But after Imperial Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, fear and paranoia struck. 75 years ago yesterday, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, telling these families who had become such a valuable part of the fabric of so many communities on the West Coast that they were now enemies of the state and that they would lose their rights as Americans. We have the Oregon Ducks here tonight. We're glad you're here tonight, Ducks. Barco's clapping too loud there, I think. The reason I bring that up, one of the courageous young Japanese Americans who decided to challenge the constitutionality of 9066 was a University of Oregon graduate named Minoru Yasui. In Hood River, Oregon, he purposely broke a government curfew in order to take that to court so he could fight that discrimination. Among the 120,000 Japanese Americans who spent the next three years behind barbed wire, were Kenichi Zenomura and his two teenage sons, Howard and Harvey, who were soon toiling in the desert to construct a makeshift diamond in the Gila River internment camp in Arizona. Eventually, a 32-team league was formed among the camps, and baseball began to bring healing and hope. A few years later, those two teenage boys, Howard and Harvey, would end up suiting up for the Fresno State Bulldogs, where they'd be joined by another youngster who had endured internment camp life in Post in Arizona, Fibber Hirayama. And we are standing today, of course, on Pete Biden Field. In 1950, Coach Biden won his first conference championship with help from these two gentlemen who are with us here tonight, Howard Zanamura and Fibber Hirayama. Can you guys stand? Woo! Now, we don't have time for me to tell you all their history. But in 1951, this duo helped the Bulldogs to the best winning percentage in school history. 36 and 4 was their record that year, and only one of those four losses was to a college team. The rest were to the pros. Howard was a senior that year. His average was 424. Fibber was a junior and stole a school record 36 bases in only 40 games. The system was different then, and that little school from the Valley wasn't invited to the NCAA playoffs. But they fixed that the next year. Fibber stole 33 more bases, and the Bulldogs achieved their first NCAA berth. Since then, as you all know, Fresno State has been one of the top baseball programs in the country. But these are the gentlemen who started it. And Fibber and Howard would both go on to become two of the first Japanese Americans to play professionally in Japan. The team they competed for, the Hiroshima Carp in the city that the U.S. had devastated just a decade before. They're both members of the Fresno State Baseball Hall of Fame. They've both been incredible ambassadors around the world for the sport that they love. Let's hear it again for Fibber Hirayama and Howard Zanamura. That's just a nutshell, but I want you to hear from someone else about the legacy that these two men have left on our valley. He's the director of the Nisei Baseball Research Project, and he goes around the world to tell the story of Japanese-American baseball uh, here in our country. So let's welcome Kerry Yo Nakagawa. Kerry? Thank you. 21 years ago, we started the Nisei Baseball Research Project. Uh, 
Uh, it's a project, our mission was to bring awareness and education about Japanese Americans in the concentration camps during World War II, but through the prism of baseball and our multimedia projects. Along this 21 years uh, and this journey, Howard Senimura and Trevor Hirayama have supported it and with their support and their beingness. So I really appreciate the, the fact that for these last 21 years, they were such an integral part to our history. They uh, were the all, they kept the all-American pastime alive, even from behind Bob Wire. After the war, they came to Fresno State. Both became Baseball Hall of Famers. Everywhere they went, they were all-stars. Fibber Hirayama with the Stockton Ports. Howard Zanimura with the U.S. Army team, as well as Fibber. Uh, later, they, would, as Paul would say, they would go on to play professional baseball with the Hiroshima Card. So they were our bridge builders. They were they opened up this bridge across the Pacific. So tonight we want to thank Fresno State Athletic Director Jim Barco, uh, all the fans that, that support our history, uh, and especially uh, Coach Bateso, and uh, and especially especially the. Uh, World Series champions, Fresno State Bulldogs, that are honoring these bridge builders, these ambassadors of American baseball tonight, wearing the uniforms that my uncle, uh, Howard's father, the Fresno Athletic Club wore in 1927, 1924, and 1937 as our American ambassadors to this great game. So tonight, you guys, I know that these elders and pioneers that are with us in spirit, are very proud of you. I know that you'll carry their spirit, so go dogs. Thank you very much. And Kerio Nakagawa here is presenting to Mike Batesel this painting that depicts some of the history we've talked about. It's a print of that painting and it's signed by both Fibber Hirayama and Howard Zanamura. Hold that up, that is snazzy. And really quick, there's an opportunity for you to have one of those as well. Terry Nakagawa and his Nisei Baseball Research Project have given us two more of those prints signed by both of these legends. Uh, we're going to have a silent auction for it tonight. If you'd like to get in on that, come see Christy Lozano right there. Wave your hand, Christy. She has a bid sheet. You can put your bid in. We have one more presentation we need to make here. Later, after these players are done wearing those, uh, wearing those jerseys, we're going to present a game-worn jersey to Kariyo Nakagawa for his Nisei Baseball Research Project. And we're going to give one to Howard Zanamura so he can have it. But right now, Coach Mike Batesel has one for Fibber Hirayama. Why don't you hold that up, Coach? Get on up, Fibber. Show him what number it is. It's the number three, which Fibber wore here for the Bulldogs. And here with a special announcement is Fresno State Athletic Director Jim Barco. Thank you all for being here. One, Oregon Ducks, welcome here to Fresno. Thank you for being part of this. And we have two Hall of Fame coaches, and uh, Coach Horton, Coach Bates are here, and we have a great game. The uniforms look great, and I can help us out with that, so we're gonna win tonight and keep wearing them all year, um, year round. It's a great weekend, and we're honored to support the past and the present. And this guy right here is part of our great history. 75 years ago yesterday, 75 years ago yesterday, um, our life changed, but he never stopped. If you look up at the scoreboard right there, above, behind the whole plate, this number will be retired forever, in perpetuity, in honor of this guy right here. So, on behalf of Texas Athletics, Oregon, the Mountain West Conference, and our university, thank you all for being here. This guy is special, and it kind of uh, transforms athletics and academics and the, and the university big stuff. So thank you so much. So Fibber, your number's going to be retired later this year. You had that stolen base record here for 40 years, played 10 years in Japan, two-time All-Star there. What does it mean to you that your alma mater is going to retire your number three? I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm speechless, but I want to thank everyone involved. It's really an honor. Well, thank you. And we have one more job for Fibber Hirayama tonight. Kent Sakamoto is here as well. Kent was a four-year player for Mike Batesel, an all-whack first baseman. Kent Sakamoto's paternal grandparents met each other in the Poston, Arizona internment camp, the same place where Fibber was. 
Kent is going to help Fibber with our ceremonial first pitch tonight. We're going to have one generation to another a first pitch relay to the plate. So you're going to watch Fibber and Kent team up on that. And then Jack Hanna, Fibber's old teammate, will sing the national anthem. Thank you again for being here. And one more hand for our living legends.